the, the testimony of the angels said, He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where he laid. Come and, and, and look for yourself. But go your way. Tell this to the disciples. And Peter. Every time I read that part, it's like it, 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 I ask the question, did, this, uh, did he lose his discipleship? But the angel says, go tell his disciples and Peter that go it before you that he go it before you into Galilee there shall he see him as he said unto you and they went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre for they trembled and were amazed neither said they anything to any man for they were afraid. Father, for the next few minutes that we will spend around your word, God, our heart, we thank you for this lovely day. We pray that the experience that we will share in this lovely day will continue, Lord God, to be transforming and rippling and reflecting in Jesus' name. Guide the heart and mind of your servant that he will only speak that which you have given to him. Deposit truth and allow truth to allow your people to be free. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I've always been amazed at how fast life can change. Things are one way one day and the next day they are totally different. One day a spouse is here, the next day they are gone. One day you think you are well, the next day you discover that you have an extreme illness. One day everything in your life is going well and the next day everything is falling apart. One day it appears that there is no hope for your situation. The next day your problem is solved. It is true that many things change and occur in the course of a day. What a difference a day makes. What a difference one day can make. What a difference one day they can make that was uh, that was uh, more than true for the day when jesus died when the body of jesus was placed in the tomb of joseph of Arimathea and nicodemus that they helped to, to carry the body that was crucified in that dark and terrible day of friday they took the body down as the sun went down that night so did hope and dreams of the Lord go down on that night. So did the hope and the dreams of the disciples that went down that night. Oh, what a day, 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 what a day. Mark is the only gospel that writes and speaks of the dark, dreary Sabbath, Sabbath that had passed that day that Jesus died. He said it was a dark Sabbath, a dreary Sabbath. Jesus died on the day. He rose again from the dead on another day. And we are going to talk about the other day today. I'm sure it was a long day. I'm sure it was a miserable day for those who followed Jesus. For a different day, it marked something different. It was tragic. Saturday seemed like a day that nobody wanted to face the world was challenged at that time the followers were looking for an event and the event did not happen let me say that again the followers were looking for an event to happen but the event did not happen but on that day say that day on that day, the first Lord's day, the day Jesus rose from the dead, 
that day became an important day. What, what, what are you saying, Pastor? It became a day that changed every day that this world has existed ever since. In other words, that day has changed all days since humanity have existed on this earth. That day is today. That day makes a difference because what happened on that day still influenced humanity throughout time and eternity. That day has changed all day. It changed today. It changed yesterday. And it will change tomorrow. That day makes a difference. Pastor, what are you saying? If we look on the event that occurred on that day, it was just to some an empty tomb. It was just to some that his body was stolen. It was just to some that the disciples had took his body. Those are the theory that some people talk about on that day. But I want to talk about three things on that day. I want to talk about the day with the ministry of love. I want to talk about the day with the message of life. I want to talk today about three things. And the third one, I want to talk about the day with the mission of liberty. So let's start the day with the ministry of love. You see, the day started with these women. They had a desire. Say desire. The three women mentioned in the text had a desire. They went on the Saturday after sunset. They went at the Saturday after sunset and they went and got their spices. And they got the spices and they prepared the spices. They were in their homes. They were resting according to the command of the law of the day. And so they rest. But at sunset, they got up and they got their spices. These women just did not just come to be a witness. They came to do some work. I, 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 I'm just saying to you, they came to do some work. The text says that they went towards Jesus after the Sabbath. You see, the Sabbath ended. And so at, Saturday, at sunset... They emerged from their homes and they went to purchase spices and ointment. And why did they purchase spice and ointment? They went to the tomb to go place spice and ointment upon him. You see, already his body was wrapped and mummified by those who brought the linens and put it on them. But the woman decided that they intended that they were going to serve a purpose and make sure that the decomposed body was well perfumed. I, I want you to, to, to work with me a little bit with this one. They came to cover up the scent of death. But when they came there, the scent of death was already gone. May I just say something? They came to serve a place that was hopeless. They came to serve a place that was defeated. They came in their brokenness. They came anyhow to still serve. They came in their pain, but they came to still serve. Oh, my God. Some of us have to still serve in the midst of our brokenness. Some of us have to still serve in the midst of our pain. These women were coming to serve. They had a fear when they were coming to serve. How are we going to remove the stone? Because it is great. Yet still, they did not make that stop them from going to serve. The impossible was before them, but they did not allow that to stop their ministry. To serve the stone was great, the text says. They did not know that morning that while they were taking footsteps towards the tomb, while they were taking footsteps towards the tomb, God had already sent an earthquake. God had already allowed an earthquake. If you read in Matthew, it tells us that God allowed an earthquake to allow the stone to be rolled away. You could look at these women. They were devoted women. They were not only women that had a desire. They were devoted women. 
there were women who arose very early in the morning, 5.30. It would appear that these women got out of bed very early because of the time, the watch that they went based on scripture. And they traveled two miles. They were walking down from Bethany to come down into Jerusalem to go to the to go to where they, they had buried the they had put the body. And here they walked two miles. In other words, in the dark in the morning, they walked two miles to commit their service. They were not afraid. The only thing that brought fear to them is that they could not remove the stone. The trip was a trip uh, that they made with broken heart. Uh, the trip was a trip that they made uh, with pain and hurt. Uh, you might understand. Uh, some of us have uh, learned to serve in the midst of hurt. Uh, may I just dare challenge some of us. Uh, David learned to serve uh, in the season of pain. Uh, Joseph learned to serve uh, in the season of pain. Uh, Jesus learned to serve in the season of pain. I want to encourage somebody who has been serving God and felt like giving up. There are times when we just have to serve in our seasons of pain. Paul served in his season of pain. He was whipped. He was chastised. He was persecuted. He was in prison. But he served in his ministry of pain. We have to understand that some of us sometimes when few things hit us, we feel like giving up. The corona has come and hit some of us in some ways. We feel like giving up. But I want to encourage somebody in the midst of what we are going to serve in the midst of your pain. They were also, they walked. The text tell me that while they were walking, doubt came in. Doubt came in. Doubt is a, is a very powerful spirit. And it came in. It started to creep in on them. They were walking and they kept talking. They were walking and they kept talking. I could imagine their talk wasn't just a normal talk. The talk had a faith move in it. It says, God, we are coming to the tomb. But while we're coming to the tomb, God, we need your help, God. We don't know how to roll it away. All of a sudden, God knows how to send an earthquake to shift the seals uh, that man might put upon you to shift the seals uh, that's supposed to make you not go forward to shift the seals uh, to allow Jesus to step out uh, out of the grave he arose uh, with a might to triumph uh, from his own he arose a victor from the dark domain he lives forevermore I want to tell somebody doubt uh, might have held the stone uh, but God allowed uh, the power of the earthquake to release the stone the stone that we talk about. Uh, some theologians argue that it could be over a thousand po pounds. It was there. That stone was there. And the women were going down. Uh, the women were going down in the text. Uh, I want you to follow me in the text. Uh, the text says the women were going down the morning. Uh, and they felt sorrow. Uh, they felt grief. Uh, they felt fear. Uh, they recognized that. Listen to me. We want to get in there. Uh, but we don't know how to get in there. Some of us want to get to meet Jesus closer. But you don't know how to get to meet him closer. Let me open up the opportunity for you this morning. And so the tomb is open. Let me open up the opportunity and say you don't have to go into the presence of God uh, and be afraid. The Bible says you can come boldly to the throne of grace. He has transferred from the tomb uh, to the throne. Uh, and now, brothers and sisters, uh, you do have to go to the tomb uh, to worship him. Uh, all you got to do is go to the throne room uh, and worship him. Uh, some of us still want to taste at the tomb, uh, but he said I've transferred uh, from the tomb uh, to the throne room. You see, it was an awful Saturday dawn. You see, you, you see, many were scattered. Their dreams were shattered. Their hope was destroyed. The ladies were still going down. They believed that he was the Messiah. They believed that he was the one. They believed that he was the one and that he is the king of Israel. They believed that he would have established his kingdom. This was what they believed. All their fondest hope and dreams came crawling and crippled by him being placed into the tomb. Faith turned their grief and grief to utter hopeless 
as they saw the broken body taken down off the cross that Friday evening. When that stone was rolled and locked, bam! They heard the sound. When the sound, they said, it's over, it's over, it's over. Hope is gone. There is no future. There is no salvation. There is no kingdom. Jesus is dead. It's over. That's the picture that the enemy wants us uh, to leave with. That's the mark that was etched into their minds uh, on that Friday evening. The story of Jesus seemed to have ended to some on that day. To those who were celebrating, they celebrated loudly on that day. But I hear Paul in his writing to First Corinthians chapter, in writing to the Corinthians church, in First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse nineteen, said, "If in this life only, ha 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 ha, we have hope," he says in Christ, "we are of all men most miserable." So Paul seems to employ the idea that we have to recognize that hope is more than in the grave. People were moving through the world. On, and let, me, let me go back with this thought. People were moving in the world unsaved from their sin. People were moving through the world oblivious to God and that he exists and was ready to save them at that very moment. They were moving through the world without joy, without peace, without hope. They were trapped in Satan's plan of sin. And they were heading to hell. On that day, that's all was happening. But, 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 but what, what, what are you saying, Pastor? The problem with the majority of people is that they were trapped in a Saturday mentality. A mentality that he is in the grave. Because that's the Saturday mentality. The Saturday mentality is that he is in the grave. You see, they lived in the darkness of their sin and deprived and unaware of the joy unspeakable and full of glory that could come to them. They lived with the idea and the perspective that the tomb is closed, the tomb is sealed. You see, men was looking for an event but God was saying, I want you to look for a perspective. A perspective like this. Here's the perspective. I am going to live again. That's not an event. It's a mindset. He was preaching this to his disciples. He said, listen to me. I am going to live again. That's not an event. That's a perspective. He wants them to get this view in their spirit and in life. You see, a lot of us come on this Easter morning and we come to celebrate an event. And God is saying to tell you that I don't want you to celebrate an event. I want you to get a truth, a perspective of who I am. That I am the resurrection, the truth, and the light. The day was a day with a message of life. Mark said they went to look. They were walking towards the tomb. Their heads was bowed down as they walked towards the tomb. The text tells me, but as they lifted up their eyes, as they lifted up their eyes, they saw the massive stone roll away from the door. The way into the tomb was wide open. There sat the mindset and Friday mindset and the memories of Friday started to drift away. All of a sudden, hear me out, hear me out. It was Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter is sleeping. Judas is betrayed. But Sunday is coming. It was Friday. Pilate was struggling. The councils were, conspiracy, were conspiring. The crowd was venting. But let me tell you, Sunday is coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary's crying. 
Peter is denied, but they just didn't recognize that there was going to be a Sunday. It's Friday. The Romans beat Jesus. They robed him in scarlet. They crowned him with thorns. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters, Sunday was coming. It's Friday. They see Jesus walking to Calvary, blood dripping from his body, being stabbed with a spear, beaten and broken for us. But let me tell you, Sunday is coming. It's Friday. The world seems to be winning sinners seem to be going around grinning but let me tell you what sunday is coming it's friday the soldiers nailed him to the cross they nail him between two t's but let me remind you sunday is coming it's friday his disciples are questioned what happened to the king that said he would live again but let me remind you sunday is coming it's friday the earth is trembling the skies glow dark and the king yields his spirit but let me tell you Sunday is coming but let me tell you what happened on Sunday now brother Joel because you see we have described Friday because Friday was itched into their minds when they were going to the tomb but sister Lisa let me just tell you it was Friday that they were thinking about but all of a Sunday they were moving towards the tomb with a Friday and a Saturday mentality the Friday mentality was that he was broken the Saturday mentality is that he was locked up but the Sunday mentality oh my God God touched your neighbor and said there was a Sunday mentality. How are we going to roll away the stone? The Sunday mentality tells me that the stone is rolled away. The Sunday mentality tells me that he's not here. He's gone. The Sunday mentality tells me the grave clothes is there, but he's no longer there. The Sunday mentality tells me that the seal is broken. The tomb is empty. The Sunday mentality tells me that the soldiers are gone. Because they are afraid. The Sunday mentality tell me that victory came out of the grave. The Sunday mentality tell me he arose a victor from the dark domain. That's what the Sunday told me. Sunday tells me that he came from the grave. Up from the grave he arose. How do I know that? The text again. Turn to the text. Because this is not pastor's idea. The text tells me that they forged their way into an empty tomb. Matthew 28, 2, 4, 2 to 4 tells us that the earthquake came for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone. That's how Matthew describes it. That the angel came and rolled back the stone. But let me tell you, the tomb is open. Why is the tomb open? Because guess what? They need you to see that it's empty. You see, he could have walked through, he could have walked through the stone. Because later on when he was with his disciples, he walked through the things, the door. So he had the ability then to do that. But to allow mankind to recognize that the tomb is empty. That is not a tomb of Buddha. That is not a tomb of Confucius. That is not a tomb of Selassie. That is not a tomb of Krishna. He allowed mankind to step into the empty tomb. To become a witness to the world. That I am risen and I am alive. And I live forevermore. The day is a day and a lovely day. Let, 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 let me push in the text a little bit more. And when they got into the tomb, they found a young man sitting on the right side. He was clothed in white garments. Some put it as strange garment. And the young man had a message for them. I, 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 I'm going to get there today. The young man had a message, Brother Marla. The, the message was a message of peace. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid struck by terror because that, that's what the angel actually said. If you want to translate it in another way of being afraid, he literally said, don't let terror strike your life. I'm go going somewhere. Because don't let terror strike the season of chaos around us. Don't let terror strike the month of fear around us. 
Don't let terror strike the day of hopelessness around us. Don't let terror strike the hour of defeat that is around us. We have to understand the next minute holds our victory. I said to the brothers and sisters, the next minute holds our victory. It doesn't matter. You might hit me down one time and I might fall another time. But if I trust God, I will rise again. For it ain't no power on earth can tie me down. The righteous man falls seven times. Yet the Lord pick him up. He had a message of peace. The angel said, the angel was telling them, you can overcome fear by just coming in and see for yourself. Some of us who have been walking in fear, just come in to Jesus and you will see for yourself that you don't have to walk in a spirit of fear because the word of the Lord said, I have given you a spirit of power, Hasha, of love and of a soul, man. I allow you when you're coming to my tomb to leave with a spirit of power. All you got to do is enter and you will sense the resurrection and the resurrection power gives you the ability to live over fear. Fear has no place here. It's a spirit. I rebuke it. I declare that we do not live under that spirit, but we live in a spirit of power. I went ahead of myself. Get back to the message. The angel had a mini, a message of power. The angel had a message of power. What, 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 how do you know? He said, Jesus that was crucified is dead, is alive. Let me see, clear that up again. He said, Jesus, who was crucified, is alive. Oh, but Pastor, what do you mean by that? Jesus, who died, is alive. What, what, what do you mean by that, Pastor? It means Jesus rose from the dead. There was a, there was a sound that, 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 that they heard. They said, he is alive. I hear Roman, I hear First Corinthians chapter 15 jump back in my thoughts one more time because we have to understand that Calvary made the resurrection inevitable we have to understand that the death of Jesus made the rising of Jesus inevitable it was death that made the resurrection inevitable where are you going with this pastor the resurrection of Jesus is the greatest event that man sin is the greatest event that has ever happened on earth but the perspective that God wanted us to leave with is not an event. It is that he wanted us to leave with the idea that I have made provisions for your sin through an event. But we spend more time on the event more than the perspective that he wants us to leave. That it is because of this event that we can now come alive in Christ Jesus. So number one, the resurrection provides a solution for the sin problem in the earth. Number two, the resurrection provides a great promise of hope for them that sees the grave as somewhere and that there is no hope beyond the grave. Can, can I just jump down into this thought a little bit more? You see, Jesus, Jesus... The resurrection of Jesus is so powerful and so great and so marvelous, Joel. I'm going to touch on something that is sensitive to me and to you. Very sensitive. Have you ever seen somebody you love dearly die? And you go over and you try to talk to them and you try to touch them and you try to say something to them because... You didn't get to say to them when you needed to say to them and you didn't have the opportunity to say it. And now that they are dead, you are trying to speak. You see how powerful that is? That mate, they can't talk back to you. That's how powerful that is. It keeps your loved one from responding to you in a time when you want to talk to them. They can't talk back to you. Because death has held them and has gripped their bodies. But my God, my God, all it has done, Joel, has gripped the body. Because Joel, may I tell you something? 
you have to understand that the spirit that dwells within us, that resurrection spirit, when it dwells within us, it does not matter what death does to the body. There is going to be an opportunity, Joel, where you will get to talk to mommy one more time and say, mommy, what I didn't say on that day, what I did not say on May 10th in 1997, in, in 2017, mommy, I can say it now to you because death has no Go no power over you. You have rose and you live triumphant with the Savior. You see, when death grips the person that you love, the wife that you love, the mother that you love, the daughter that you love, the baby that you love, the friend that you love, that friend will never talk to you again because death has its hold on him. But there is an opportunity. The resurrection. That component disqualifies death totally. It's like you're making a mathematical equation. And all of a sudden, bam, you put something in the formula. And everything that was happening before disqualified. This is the solution. The resurrection is the solution for the sin problem. The resurrection is the solution for the hope problem. The resurrection is also the proof to tell that he's alive. Let, let, let me qualify this. I don't want you to feel that like this church don't qualify what we preach. I, I'm, I'm going to teach now. So just, just hold back with me a little bit. The, the, the resurrection proved that Christ is risen and is not dead. If he is dead, then what we are doing, the preaching of the gospel, Paul says, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and follow me. Follow me going down. Chapter 15 from 13 going down to 19. It says to us, it would have been in vain. I hear Paul shout very loudly from the book of Romans and I borrow the echo in my ears this morning. But for us also to whom he shall be imputed. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the world from the dead for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to god by the death of his son much more even being reconciled we shall be saved by his life so in other words we are saved because of the life of christ romans 5 verse 10 so that qualifies my salvation we are saved because of the life of christ let, let me push, let me push, let me push. You, you see, it's not in vain and it's not a lie because I hear Matthew says, for as, as what? As Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. That was a prophecy and that prophecy had to be fulfilled and thus that made sure Jesus spoke the prophecy and Jesus lived out the prophecy. I'm, I'm going somewhere with another thought. For the time, for that time, for beginning, Jesus, Jesus to show unto his disciples. From that time forth, began Jesus to show unto his disciples. Now this is Matthew chapter 16. The first one was Matthew 12. From that time forth, Jesus began to show forth his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and the scribe and be killed and be rose again the third day. You have to understand that the resurrection proved that Jesus' prophecy was true and that Jesus was also a true prophet. So number one, what did the resurrection do? dealt with our sin issue. Number two, it gave us hope. Number three, it fulfilled that Jesus himself was a prophet and that his prophetic word came to pass. Let's push then. Based on that, Paul is saying that if the resurrection did not come around, then our preaching is a waste of time. He's saying our preaching would be a waste of time. All that we are doing, this, this, this nice dress uh, or, 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 or robe that I'm wearing would just be a waste of time. It would be that I am just breathing and just making a lot of noise. But I know it's not a waste of time. I know because he lives, I can face tomorrow. 
let, let me push, let me push, let me push. So the elders looking at me and reminding me about communion. Our faith would be foolishness. If he was not alive, our faith would have been what? Foolishness. Thirdly, verse 15, all Christians would have been a what? Liar. Our testimony would have been false. That's what the text says. In other words, what we go around and tell people would not have been the truth. Let me push, let me push. We, are all, we all would have been lost. We all would have been lost. Marlon, can you quickly put up Romans 10 verse 9 for me? And, and I'll jump to my next point and get back to that. The department, the departure of love would have gone from us. Let, let me say that. The departure of love would have gone for us, from us. What do you mean by this? We would not have experienced God's love. Wow. God love he gave. Only son. That whosoever what? Believe in him should have what? Eternal life. Let me push. Do we have it? We have it now? That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth. The Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I, I wanted to read that again. That if thou shalt what confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, then thou shalt be saved. We have to understand that we get salvation. Because of the fact that we have confessed with our mouth and believed in our heart that he's alive. That's what we are confessing and believe. That he's alive. It is the confession that he lives. It's not the confession that he's dead. Let me clear up some theological thoughts for some of you. The confession is that he lives and God raised him from the dead. And it is upon that confession. My faith is built upon that. That hypothesis that is proven to be true by an empty tomb. For all you scholars, Jesus Ray rose. He is, he is about to transform the negative to positive. He is able to save the souls. It was a message of proof. Go look for yourself. Let me say that one more time. So for, first of all, it was a message of peace, a message of what? A message of power, and a message of proof. Go look for yourself. See it there? Let me give you in Jamaican term. Go, go in there so for no self. And see it for no self. For those of you who do not understand that vernacular, go look for your Self. I don't know how you'd say it in how you'd say it in Bahamas in Bahamia. Go look for yourself. Let me like that one. Go look. The idea is that the proof is there. The text in John tells me that when they got there and the disciples got there to go look for themselves, because it's not just the women who need to look for themselves. The disciples went to look for themselves, and the text tells me that when they got there, all of a sudden. One of the disciples pick up more speed than the other and got into the tomb. And all of a sudden, Simon Peter went in later on and he looked and he saw the napkin. That's what John said. Then came Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulchre. See it, the linen, clothed lie there, and the napkin and was about his head. Not laying with the linen cloth, but wrapped together in a place by itself. I, I, I keep telling you every year I preach this message. I preach it to my children. Jesus was a neat freak. Jesus wrapped up the napkin and put it over in a corner. So all of you who keep in the room dirty, remember Jesus is a neat freak. Clean up on the act, because Jesus clean up his act. When he get up, the clothes and him say you stay right over there sir. Me is going to walk down into Galilee now and talk to all 500 people. Me is going to talk to my disciples 
You see, it was evident that he was alive. He deliberately did this, you know. He, he made sure that the past, all of this happened in the Passover. So over 500 people would see him, and they can't say 500 people lie. He talked to 12. They could say 12 lie, you know, because there was his friend. And then he walked down the road with the men from Emmaus Road. Remember that? And, and they didn't even recognize him. But when he broke bread, they recognized who he was. You have to understand that he walks with me and he talks with me. Let, let, let me push. Let me push. Let me push. The empty tomb provides for us an opportunity that we no longer have to be trapped in darkness. The empty tomb provides for us that Saturday is over and we are transported into Sunday. The empty tomb reminds us that the, listen, the fears have been rolled away. The stone is rolled away. Fear is rolled away. Uncertainty is rolled away. The spirit of defeat is rolled away. The empty tomb is a response to fear. It is a response to uncertainty. It's a response to defeat. The empty tomb still reminds us that he is no longer there, but he lives. It's a response to what we go through. But let me bring it home. Joel, give me some music while we bring it home. It was a day with a mission of liberation. What, what, what do you mean by this, Pastor? He gave, the angel gave them a mission. Here's the mission. The angel commanded them. And he says, go tell others. Go tell the disciples. And while you're doing it, tell Peter. Tell Peter. The idea behind this on that morning is that he wanted them, the woman's witness, not only to be a witness to mankind, but a witness to the whole world. You sometimes wonder why women got there first? Because of their compassion. They were willing to show and to serve even when it was difficult. Even I'm not saying men don't do that, you know. But they're willing to go to the place even under difficult situation. They got a command. The command was to bring a word of hope. He's alive. Sunday is here. A lovely day is here. Peter, a lovely day is here. Not a day of sorrow, but a day of peace. Let me push. They got a charge. The charge was, your heart don't have to be sorrowful. They got a charge. A charge that, listen to me, the tomb is empty. When they got there, the text says they were amazed. I, 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 another, tra another translation put it this way they were displaced from their mind you hear what I said the text said in other words they were not afraid no they were amazed you see God can move you from fear to amaze but you got to be willing to serve in the process because it's in the process that you will see the amazing hand of God transferring the difficult moments and bringing them into open opportunity of miracles. As they went there, the resurrection provided for them an amazing experience that changed their life forever. An experience that rings out even today. That Sunday is here. We no longer have to struggle with the stones that have stopped us. We no longer have to struggle with the stones that hinder us from going forward. You see, Lazarus knew about that type of situation. 
because they, they put him behind the stones. And Jesus recognized that if he's behind the stones, he can't do what he's supposed to do. So he said, roll away the stones. And then he called forth and he says, Lazarus, come forth. He was showing them what he was going to do for himself. He was going to step out on that morning and show all humanity that all power is given to me. The struggle of death and darkness that traps us on the Saturday evening is broken. The heartache of the Sunday morning is over. What a day, the heartache on the Sunday morning. You went there broken on the Sunday morning, confused on the Sunday morning, defeat on the Sunday morning, but when you left, what a message. You left with joy on the Sunday morning. You left with hope on the Sunday morning. You left to the peace on the Sunday morning. Can you leave this Sunday morning with a different perspective? Not celebrating an event, but celebrating that the joy has come. Not leaving and thinking about the Easter bunny and the eggs and so on, but a perspective that love has come. Not leaving on this Sunday morning with pain and heartache, but leaving with peace that will pass all understanding. I don't know where you are, but I want to tell you that because he lives, you can face tomorrow. Because he lives, a lovely day is here today. Would you like on this day, on this Easter day, on this resurrection day, to come into the greatest day in your life? Today can be your lovely day. I don't know where you are listening to me, but here's an opportunity. He came from the grave to deal with our sin issue. He came from the grave to give us hope. He came from the grave to fulfill the truth that he lives forevermore. And he died for your sin and for my sin. Today I say to you, if you confess him and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, and that God raised him from the dead. It gives you salvation because it's upon the confession of your faith, not your works. Us serving him in our pain is just a privilege in the package of his love. But I want to encourage you right where you are, bow your heads with me as we pray. So, Father, right now I pray. For that person, Lord God, who has been going through pain and difficulty and hopelessness and defeat. I pray and ask, Lord, as they will make that decision and pray this prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I recognize that I need you. I need a Savior to save me from my sins. I confess today with my mouth that Jesus Christ died for my sins. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. And I thank you for my salvation. I made this decision today not because of an event, but because of a perspective I have that you came for my sins, for our sins. Thank you for my salvation. In Jesus' name. Amen.